A recent report out of MIT analyzing world oil production and consumption also concluded that the basic fundamentals of supply and demand could not have been responsible for last year's run-up in oil prices. And Michael Master says the U.S. Department of Energy's own statistics show that if the markets had been working properly, the price of oil should have been going down, not up. From quarter four of 07 until the second quarter of 08, the EIA, the Energy Information Administration, said that supply went up, worldwide supply went up, and worldwide demand went down. So you have supply going up and demand going down, which generally means that price is going down. And this was the period of the spike. This was the period of the spike. So you had the largest price increase in history during a time when actual demand was going down and actual supply was going up during the same period. However, the only thing that makes sense that lifted the price was investor demand. Masters believes the investor demand for commodities and oil futures in particular was created on Wall Street by hedge funds and the big Wall Street investment banks like Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Barclays, and JP Morgan, who made billions investing hundreds of billions of dollars of their clients' money. The investment banks facilitated it. Uh, you know, they, they, they found folks to write papers uh, espousing uh, the benefits of investing in commodities. And then they promoted commodities as a quote-unquote asset class. Like you could invest in commodities just like you could in stocks or bonds or anything else. Like they were suitable for long-term investment. Dan Gilligan of the Petroleum Marketers Association agreed. Are you saying that, that companies like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley uh, and Barclays have as much to do with the price of oil going up as, as Exxon or Oh, absolutely. Shell? Yes. Uh, I, I tease uh, people sometimes that, you know, people say, well, who's the largest oil company in America? And they always say, well, Exxon Mobil or Chevron or BP. But I'll say, no, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley isn't an oil company in the traditional sense of the word. It doesn't own or control oil wells or refineries or gas stations. But according to documents filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission, Morgan Stanley is a significant player in the wholesale market through various entities controlled by the corporation. It not only buys and sells the physical product through subsidiaries and companies that it controls, Morgan Stanley has the capacity to store and hold 20 million barrels. These storage tanks behind me in New Haven, Connecticut, hold Morgan Stanley heating oil bound for homes in New England, where it controls nearly 15% of the market. The Wall Street bank Goldman Sachs also has huge stakes in companies that own a refinery in Coffeyville, Kansas, and control 43,000 miles of pipeline and more than 150 storage terminals. An analyst at both investment banks contributed to the oil frenzy that drove prices to record highs. Goldman's top oil analyst predicted last March that the price of a barrel was going to $200. Morgan Stanley predicted $150 a barrel. Both companies declined our request for an interview, but maintained that their oil businesses are completely separate from their trading activities and that neither influence the independent opinions of their analysts. There is no evidence that either company has done anything illegal. Is there price manipulation going on? I, I can't say. Uh, and, and the reason I can't say is because nobody knows. Our, our federal regulators don't have access to the data uh, they, they don't know who holds what positions. Why don't they know? Why don't they know? Yeah. Because federal law doesn't give them the jurisdiction to find out. It's impossible to tell exactly who was buying and selling all those oil contracts because most of the trading is now conducted in secret with no public scrutiny or government oversight. Over time, the big Wall Street banks were allowed to buy and sell as many oil contracts as they wanted for their clients, circumventing regulations intended to limit speculation. And in 2000, Congress effectively deregulated the futures market, granting exemptions for complicated derivative investments called oil swaps, as well as electronic trading on private exchanges. Who was responsible for deregulating the oil future market? You'd have to say, Enron, this was something they desperately wanted and they got.
Michael Greenberger, who wanted more regulation while he was at the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, not less, says it all happened when Enron was the seventh largest corporation in the United States. This was when Enron was riding high, and what Enron wanted, Enron got. Why did they want uh, a deregulated market in oil futures? Because they wanted to establish their own little energy futures exchange through computerized trading. She's going to pay me a penny and a half. They knew that if they could get this trading engine established without the controls that have been placed on speculators, they would have the ability to drive the price of energy products in any way they wanted to take it. When Enron failed, we learned that Enron and its conspirators who used their trading engine were able to drive the price of electricity up, some say by as much as 300% on the West Coast. Is the same thing going on right now in the oil business? Every Enron trader who knew how to do these manipulations became the most valuable employee on Wall Street. But some of them may now be looking for work. The oil bubble began to deflate early last fall when Congress threatened new regulations and federal agencies announced they were beginning major investigations. It finally popped with the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers and the near collapse of AIG, who were both heavily invested in the oil markets. With hedge funds and investment houses facing margin calls, the speculators headed for the exits. From July 15th until the end of November, roughly $70 billion dollars came out of commodities futures from these index funds. In fact, gasoline demand went down by roughly 5% over that, that same period of time. Yet the price of crude oil dropped more than $100 a barrel. It dropped 75%. How do you explain it? By looking at investors. That's the only way you can explain it. The regulatory lapses in the commodities market that many believe fomented the rapid speculation in oil have still not been addressed although the incoming Obama administration has promised to do so.